Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review, and today's game up on the tabletop is called Tokyo Sidekick by Japanime Games and Little Future. It's made by Yusuke Emi, and it is a game that is cooperative, plays two to four players, ages 13 or 14 and up, and it plays roughly in about an hour or so. Our first game took about an hour and a half, and so I'm guessing it'll be somewhere in between there. And you are playing in Tokyo as superheroes. You're gather a superhero, you're gonna gather your sidekick, and then you're going to go out and fight villains super villains and if you're lucky enough you'll fight the menace as well there are a ton of different characters in this game to choose from as well as the sidekicks that you can mix and match between and then you're also going to have a ton of different villains then super villains and a couple menaces as well to choose from that all function differently and the game is going to go in rounds where you'll be moving your characters around playing certain cards utilizing certain abilities and attempting to solve problems in the city there's going to be different incidents that are going to take place in which you're going to need to try and stop from happening especially if they're red incidents because that can lead to fatalities which is dangerous as well as you're going to need to defeat villains and supervillains all while protecting the city and as you do that the badder and more scarier guys are going to start coming out and you're going to have to start dealing with them as well you're going to have to first smash their armor smash their health and defeat them as the game progresses as long as the city doesn't get too damaged and people don't die as long as your characters don't pass and if you can defeat them in a timely period or fashion you will win the game but if not you're in deep trouble because things get real challenging in this game of Tokyo Sidekick let's take a look down below what the game comes with basically how to play the game in a very brief summary and then what I think about the game. Welcome to Tokyo and the game Tokyo Sidekick. And we are going to go ahead and set it up for two players, except I'm only going to show you uh, two player boards and one player area because there is so much to show in this game, but I think you'll get it regardless. Every player is going to choose a superhero and a sidekick, and they're going to have a specific location that you can attach them to. The game will tell you which are the best combinations, but you can go ahead and choose for yourself. Place them on their starting locations. You're also going to go ahead and take out the starting incidents from the incident deck. They have a green number on the bottom right. Place them out on the board where they say this is actually already pre-set up. So if you look at the board here, you can see where they're going to start. There's going to be two yellows, one red, and three green ones. Also, shuffle the Tokyo incident deck, but remove the highlighted red cards and place them off to the side. Shuffle out and then deal out two or more, depending on the number of players, in the bottom left-hand corner of the board. Take this crime time the token and place it on this red space there and then shuffle this damage deck up. Actually, don't shuffle it. Just go ahead and place it down. And if you want to play a harder game, remove five. If you want to play an easier game, leave five in. It does change the difficulty just a little bit. Take these white cards here. These are going to be the villains. These are the super villains. Place the super villains on bottom after you've shuffled them and the white cards on top. Then take off one of those cards and place it down here. And this is going to be the first villain of the game. This is Jinx Cat, and she's going to be here at Tamachi. Place her there. Last thing you need to do is go ahead and choose a menace. Do you want King Kaiju, or you want Fuji Sengen, or Dokan Castle of Darkness? If you want to be easier, start off with King Kaiju. Trust me, easy is the best way to go to begin the game. Place it to the side, along with this really cool little standee, acrylic standee. Then also go ahead and take this building card, a building token here and place it on zero. If this ever gets to 15, the game is over. So you want to go ahead and make sure you start it at zero. Then there's the asylum here. And you're going to be placing down the villains and super villains across here to then be able to fight the menace. And if you can beat the menace, you win the game. Your character board's pretty simple. Go ahead and put your EXP token on zero. Take your main character board along with the unlock tokens and set them off to the side, as well as take your little sidekick character and place him next to your character. You're also going to have a superhero that's going to have level abilities. Start them on the blank side or the grayed out side. And when you upgrade them, you'll up upgrade them from one to three. Flip them over when you do, along with your 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 uh, gauntlet or whatever it is that you have, your item, a gadget. And then you can go and set it aside because you're going to be giving this to your sidekick when you possibly can. The last thing for your hero is you're going to go ahead and make a deck of 10 cards. The hero will have a unique form of energy power, and in this case, this one here, the unique form of energy, in this case, it's power, but it could be speed or concentration. Regardless, you're going to start off with three of these, three of these, 
and three of these. So three of each of concentration, speed, or power. That's nine cards. And then look at your player ability, power, or ability card. And it'll tell you which one of these you get a double of. Take it, and then you'll shuffle that deck and also set it to the side. And that's all you need to do to set the entire game up. There's a ton of characters and tokens, which I'll go ahead and bring out in a second here after I finish explaining the basics of the game. But yeah, there's a ton of stuff. And just go ahead and move all that to the side if you do not need it. Then let's talk about the game. There's three phases. Phase one, standby. Any beginning of a turn effects or any abil abilities or skills that you might be able to use. Then action phase. One player is going to take all the actions that they possibly can. They're going to go ahead and declare any actions they want. They're going to go ahead and pay for any actions, apply those actions, and then finalize them and continue. After that, they're going to have an end phase, and the end phase is pretty simple. It's going to revolve around placing out new guys here, and it's going to revolve around taking potential damage, and it's going to also uh, let you redraw your hand and move this little token, uh, or check to see if this little token is here. So which I'll explain in a second. Let's go ahead and start with actions, because I think, I think standby is pretty fairly simple. Now actions is what you can do on your turn. And here are all the different types of actions. There's also actions potentially on your character boards as well. You can move one or two spaces by spinning the appropriate currency. You can draw an extra card. You can remove a card from your deck or hand, I should say. You can resolve an incident if you're currently on it. You can attack, and you're going to be attacking first the defense and then the health of the villain. And if you can defeat the health, you're then going to be able to claim that villain into the asylum here. You're going to be able to assemble, which means you can move your hero to your sidekick or your sidekick to your hero, depending on which way you want to go about it. And then you can also power up, and power up will let you spend experience that you've earned throughout the game to do things like gain better cards and put them in your deck, or attach your gadget to your uh, ally, or you can increase your skills, like these guys here. Maybe you want to upgrade this from nothing to one, and then you can be able to move up to three spaces as opposed to one and two. And once you've used all your currency, which is going to be used for actions, that's when you'll end your turn. And when you end your turn, you do the end phase. And end phase is pretty simple. You move this guy here. If there's a card there, which there will be, you'll take this and you'll place it based on the appropriate area. And it'll tell you where to place it. You place it just like that. And then after that, you would move on to the next thing. And it tells you right here on the board. It'll say, okay, after the incidents, then you're going to go ahead and take damage. And it'll take damage based on the bad guys in the field. There's only one bad guy. So you'll take one damage from the bad guy, place it into your discard pile, which will get reshuffled into your deck, just like any normal deck builder. Then you're going to redraw your hand. So basically after you've played out your cards, just like this, and then use these cards by turning them to spend them, like you would in Magic or any other game that involves spending currency, then you're going to go ahead and discard them after that phase is over, in which case you're going to draw out a new set of cards. And if you can't, you'll reshuffle your discard pile, which is how you get that damage into your deck, which can possibly go on to your board here, which you don't want because damage literally does nothing. After that, you're going to check to see if this token is here. So if this token goes to, on the next player's turn, they do all their actions, and then this goes here, you'll place this out somewhere on the board. It'll tell you right there. And then the next time, the next player's turn, so the third turn of the game, you're going to check if it hits the crime time. And if it does, you follow the simple steps here. Do any bad guys have this symbol? If they do, enact those. Then check the incidents. How many red and yellow incidents are there on the board? And in this case, there's five. So this will mark down to five here. Then you'll check any red incidents, and if there are any red incidents, which in this case there's a ton, you'll go ahead and place these down on the board with all those there, and if they get another one, the game is over and you lose. Then place out a villain from the deck here, so you'll flip over a new one, place it in a space, and check to find the standee and place it on the board somewhere. Finally, you'll redraw these guys out, and then continue turns as normal. Players will then go through their action phase, or standby action, and then once again the end phase and keep moving along. The game ends. When all the damage cards have been removed and placed into decks, and remember, when you remove them from your deck, they don't go back here. They get removed from the game. If this moves all the way to 15, the game is over. And then finally, the last way you can lose the game is if any of these spaces here get an extra fire. 
The only way you win the game is after you defeat two villains, you're going to put these two fires here. You'll fight two super villains, and if you beat those guys, you place those there. Then you'll take your menace, place it on top of the deck. The next time you reveal a bad guy, you flip it over, you place this character where he goes, and then you defeat him before either the timer runs out or you get overwhelmed by baddies. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. It's a little bit of, it's a full cooperative game. It's a little bit of a deck builder. It's got a little bit of like control and area control as to where you want to go around the board and how you want to work together. And it pretty much plays like a resource allocation game as well. You need to make sure you have the right resources to utilize them to the best of your ability. There's a ton of stuff I didn't talk about, like fighting, as well as the different abilities, all the different characters, because there is a ton of them, and they all work in their own different unique ways. But me and Callie are going to come up, and we're going to review the game and explain it as best we can to you so you get a full understanding of the game. Tokyo Sidekick. Okay, let's talk about it. So let's discuss Tokyo Sidekick by Japanime Games and Little Future. I keep wanting to say Little Planet, Little Big Planet, that game I used to play, mm -hmm. but it's by Little Future. Uh, this is a rather large size box for a Japanese game. Most Japanese games are rather small and this is a rather big one. In fact, I remember Eric, the owner of the company, holding this game alongside Gloomhaven and um, I can't remember the other game, but they're really rather large games and this one like was holding its own yeah. up against yeah. those big boy games. Well, the main thing is because the board is so big and there's so many characters to play. There are the a game. ton of <laughs> characters. So this game is a typical cooperative in which you're going to be moving around a city, kind of like Pandemic, attempting to deal with problems. Now, they're not viruses, they're incidents, and the incidents can range from not so bad, like the green ones, to the yellow ones being kind of bad because they'll affect how much... Uh, you, how much you the city takes damage. With, if you don't deal with the yellow ones. And then yeah. the red ones are extremely <laughs> dangerous because and basically every round... A if lot you, easier to lose. Yeah, if you <laughs> don't deal with them after they've been out for a round, the second round they're out again, then you're going to potentially lose the game by getting them... They'll catch on fire, basically. <laughs> From there, it gets a little crazier. Um, the bottom right-hand side of the board kind of inflicts the incidents, and you get to kind of see what's coming up, whether it be some pretty stable... Uh, green ones that are popping out, maybe you don't have to deal with those as much. As well as, of course, as every single crime time wave or crime wave pops up, new bad guys are going to come out. So you want to defeat bad guys before more bad guys come out. Because as more bad guys come out, the game gets way more challenging. Yes. And the way you progress through the game is by defeating at least two villains and then two super villains. But if you have four villains out by the time you defeat two, you still have to deal with those guys even as you've progressed to the super villains. Yeah, and as you beat <laughs> the monsters, obviously, and beat the uh, beat the vil super villains, the villains and then the super villains and then the menaces, right? Uh, if you beat two specifically of the villains, you'll go on yeah. to the super villains. And then when you beat two of those, you'll place the menace on top of the deck and you'll deal with that guy. Once you defeat the menace, you win the game. But the game continues as the menace is out. And if you can't defeat it, more super villains pop out onto the board. And some of them do some crazy stuff. We did not do well our first time playing this game. And you can see that in, in the um, live, stream. live stream video that we have. I think we'll link that as well. <laughs> they can yeah, check it out. There's a live stream of us just <laughs> getting demolished. The game is the extremely game is really challenging. I think now that um, once you know kind of how you're supposed to kind of optimize your turn to deal with all of these different threats and kind of the better gauge the threat level of each and kind of what you have to do there, then um, you can get better at the game. There are definitely better choices than others yeah. in the game. There's almost what I would say the right turn compared to the wrong turn. And it's learning what your combination is and determining based on your combination what the right turn is. Yeah, but it's not just on your turn. It's also based on what other people are going to be doing on their turns. Because you really do have to coordinate that. Uh, because if you're going after an objective that someone else is doing to something totally different and both of those things are not going to be complete, so you're going to keep adding bad stuff to it, then that's not as, as great as... Both of you teaming together to defeat one thing so you can go get the next. And, well, that's and because you're up. also going to need to make sure when you work together, there's a lot of, you can co combo fight. Yeah. And it's really yeah, important that you do that. Cool. And I also noticed, too, that you can do duo stuff and then, like, you have both your sidekick and your hero together and uh -huh. you can get bonus points or bonus bonus attack. 
Uh, but also, you can gain new heroes. Like, yeah, for instance, this for one here, team. the Jinx Cat. Uh -huh. She pops out on the board. And if you defeat her as a certain character, um, you're going to be able to gather her as Actually part of your team. Actually add her to your superhero team, which that's a really cool element. It won't always pop up in the game, but it's really fun when it does. The the deck builder aspect's pretty cool. It's yeah. pretty basic as yeah. far as it goes. There's one, twos, and threes of three different types it's of abilities. Like deck and... builder of resources. Yes. So what, what you kind of want to optimize your resources and for it has to do that... those abilities. It has that legendary feel where you're putting damage into your deck based on the amount of villains that are on the field. So when you draw those, they're kind of dead draws and you have to utilize your abilities to remove those cards from your deck. So the deck building aspect does play a role, but it's very quick and pretty simple. You know what you have on your turn. They're face up so everybody can see. As far as a master gamer, like people have a problem uh, in a lot of co-ops, you know, it's almost hard, it's almost impossible to deal with with some player who knows the game the best yeah. and tells everybody exactly what to do Master in this gamer, game. Master Gamer, Alpha Gamer. Alpha Gamer. Do you know if this game is less on that side or more? I think there's too much stuff going on to really mm -hmm. Alpha Game it because you have, everyone has their own unique abilities and level ups as well as building their deck. And you're really the only one that knows what's in your deck because you, there's so many cards in You're it. sitting there thinking so, about your turn yeah. while they're playing. And then based on your turn, you'll say, maybe but you then, should do this yeah, so that way we can we both can do this. Yeah, maybe we can and do this next turn and I'll do that next turn. There's definitely a learning curve in this game too. Yes, That's the one yes. thing I would say that might be, I guess that you consider a negative is it's very challenging. And there is a lot of learning that you'll have to go that goes into this game. But if you're looking for a more challenging cooperative game, like you 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 want to do that, then this is a great choice for you that. You think uh, Ghost Stories is more complex than this? Or more like challenging than this one? Um, there's some. I think the complexity level is similar. Maybe. Well, we hadn't played Ghost Stories since we were like not. We were new to board games then, so maybe maybe not hard. the best judge. But um, I don't know. That game was hard. It though. was hard. Yeah. Okay. This one's also very challenging though, yes, as well. So it was similar in that complexity level, but still, I think on your turn, maybe some of the things are easier to understand of what choices you have on your turn. It's just that overall level is is of challenge is similar. Uh, I like, I love the amount of different characters. They're yes. all really cool. The artwork's excellent. If you like anime style artwork, then this is going to be the game for you. Mm -hmm. If you like superheroes and supervillains and all that, this yeah. plays a role. There's a ton of different mm -hmm. characters that have different like looks to them that kind of give uh, flashbacks to other previous uh, games, even though they're probably not, you know, like you have one, this is, this gal kind of looks like, this guy kind of looks like Joker, but he's not really, yeah. you know, there's, there's one character, she street looks kind of like, kind of like Sailor Moon, Chibi, but not really. E Honda <laughs> from Street Fighter. Now they're not obviously, but they give you that feeling of like retrograde, like I'm yeah. going to go back into the past and play as this character okay, here. This. Oh, that one? Cute little character. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they all have that kind of nostalgia for you. And then there's, of course, tons of unique and new characters as well. And the ability to kind of combine them into different teams is and, nice. And the artwork for the city is really cool as well. You kind of get to explore Tokyo a little bit in the different districts. I felt like I was Tokyo. learning about all <laughs> yeah. the different districts. Learning how to pronounce the names. And you're, yeah, I mean, I guess another thing too is you're, you have, the, the only uh, main issue with the board and the components is when you're, when you're looking at the character cards at the top, it'll say, Tom, uh, Tamachi, right? Yeah. You have to go and find Tamachi on the board and place this character there. Yeah. And it's not visibly uh, apparent where that is. But on the incidents cards, they did actually include a whole map. So, so it's you can super see easy and find can find it instantly. Where it's supposed to go. So I was like, they should have had that somewhere on the cards as well because it would make it a little easier, I These suppose. Cards but, are a lot bigger too. <laughs> but I guess as you learn, I mean, you get to learn yeah, the different learn, locations. So I kind of yeah. liked that, but I can see why people might not like that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, tons of different abilities. The fact that you can power up and all that is 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 wonderful. Uh, artwork quality of the game. I, I would recommend these. Normally, I wouldn't care if you got the, the acrylic, acrylic standees. or standees, but these are definitely yeah, they're worth really cool. Using <laughs> these are way cooler than basic standees. So if they have that upgrade, I don't know if they do or not, but they do. You should definitely pick it up mm -hmm. if it's a game that seems interesting to you. Um, other than it being challenging and maybe a couple little things with the cards, the fact yeah. that they don't show the board, I, I but didn't really... But it's not just the challenge aspect that lends to the replayability, it's all the different characters and all the different villains and, and menaces as well that add a lot of replayability, even after you've beaten the game a few times. Do you have any other, any, any negatives about the game or things that could be considered uh, a negative? It's very large. <laughs> it's huge, yeah. The board is really big. And, uh, and if you're... And it's not, it's more, it's for some more maybe advanced players rather than like 
beginner or yeah, family, beginners are gonna get their players. butt kicked. Yeah, the first yeah. couple games. Uh -huh. You have to be ready for that at least. <laughs> yeah, just be aware that you're probably not going to win your first game unless you're like a pandemic expert, in which I guess, case I guess maybe yeah. You know, they, then they're probably more aware. <laughs> the game's not very difficult to learn. It's no. very simple. The rules are written out very well, the and on your player good. boards, they're all it's all written out. You know what you can do. You look and say, okay, I can move. I can uh, I can draw a card. I can remove a card. And it just tells you on here, I can attack, I can resolve an incident, I can move my characters to each other, and then I, of course I can power up, and then power up is a whole nother board, and it tells you exactly what you can do on there, and it's very simple. Once I went and played the game, just what we need to do is play it one time, and then every time afterwards I was able to say, okay, that specifically is what this does, I don't have to look back in the rule book at all, which is super nice. Um, and most of the characters are all pretty much straightforward. Some of them are a little more complex, but they were, it's not like you couldn't understand them when you read them. I, yeah. I gathered what yeah. they did, so mm -hmm. that worked pretty well. And the last little cool thing here is oh, yeah. you have uh, this little comic book. I don't know if it comes with the game or not, but it was super cool. I like it when games come with comic books that kind of explain the game, give a little bit of a story, any that kind of thing is nice. There's a lot of world building in the game, too, so each of the characters have their... The superheroes have their backstory, and that's really fun. If you're if you're into that that world building aspect, it's really fun to read. So we've given you hopefully enough information to go about whether this is something for you, uh, if you want to pick it up or not. It's currently on Kickstarter. The game is called Tokyo Sidekick by Japanese Japan Anime Games, and it keeps Little Future, not Big Planet, <laughs> Little future. future. You can go ahead and check it out down below in the description if you want to go ahead and pick this game up. Big beautiful components. This game is definitely gonna be one of those where when you're sitting there playing on a table, people are gonna walk up just because yeah. they want to see yeah. what the heck is going on in this fully cooperative game. They plays two to four players but you can also play single play player yeah. as long as you don't mind using a bunch of play, uh, character boards mm -hmm. so that's pretty much all i got anything else you want to say about the game mm -hmm. pretty straightforward yeah. check it out down below all right outro all right guys thank you for watching another unfiltered gamer board game rev review for the game tokyo sidekick if you want to pick up the game on kickstarter go ahead and take a look down below link in the description for this large cooperative game with a ton of craziness it's a pretty good review in my opinion i think we got to get both of our points across what do you think about the game what do you think is this something you're going to be wanting to picking up or is it not something you want to pick up why or why not let us know down below in the comment section and uh, i hope to see you guys in our next video and our live stream every Wednesday, which is going to be today, if I release this video on time, 6.30 p.m. PST. You can go ahead and watch us play games just like this one, and in fact, we did play this one, and we gave away games from Jap Anime Games, so it is something fun to do with the community and you to learn. Uh, basically, it's, it's even better than reviews because you can see it played, you can see the interaction, you'll understand the game, and you can make up your mind as to whether or not it's for you. Uh, but I mean, still watch my videos. Still watch my videos too, and and, and, and the streams. Do, do both. All right, guys. Thanks so much. As always, oh no, I'm in trouble. I just gave away. See you guys next time. <laughs>